I want to say thanks and welcome everybody to the weekly press briefing hosted by Muskogee Media and we have Jason Salzman, the Muskogee Creek Nation Press Secretary, joining us via the internet and my co-host and colleague Gary Fife is with us as well. Um, each week we come to you about this time of day on a Tuesday and we kind of bring you the updates from the executive branch and talk about things going on at the nation. And thank you for joining us guys. Uh, thank you, Jason. Thank you very much, Angel. Thank you, Muskogee Media, Gary, uh, Jared, guys, for having me. Uh, it's a great opportunity every week, and I'm excited to be here, as always. Wonderful. And I have a couple of uh, questions lined up, Not nothing too um, pertinent. So I first, I just wanted to open it up and see if you had anything, uh, any updates that you had going on this week, Jason? Sure. Uh, just to give you a brief report on uh, some of the things we've uh, kind of discussed in the executive office since the last time we visited. Uh, this week, uh, of course, we have uh, the chief just sent out a proclamation. It's Emergency uh, Medical Services Workers Week. So that's all of our EMS out there that do a great job and, and want to recognize them. And we were joking, the chief and I uh, earlier, it just seems like there's a different proclamation every week for something or this is a uh, official month of, uh, you know, something. So we kind of are working not to get those all crisscrossed and, and remember what we're doing on certain days and everything like that. But Definitely want to uh, uh, recognize them as well as uh, last week being as well hospital week. So uh, kind of had some neat events last week, recognizing our hospitals and the great jobs that they're doing, uh, really mitigating uh, all of their uh, strategies and everything. And to this point, seeing, uh, you know, a lot of success as far as reducing uh, the COVID cases at their facilities and not really having uh, much of an outbreak there. Uh, and, 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 because of that, uh, they're able to keep a great stockpile of, uh, of PPE on hand, adequate PPE for their facilities, and, and most importantly, for those healthcare workers that we, uh, uh, you know, just can't say it enough, so appreciative of on the front line and everything like that. Um, done a little bit more talk uh, this week, getting towards, uh, you know, having HR, having uh, the Department of Health in the same room, uh, talking about re-entry status, you know, as we've talked many times on here, we phased out, we'll phase in. Uh, we don't have anything definitive on that just yet, but we are uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, we're getting some things uh, worked out as far as uh, the, the ability to have daily screenings for employees that will be coming back. Uh, not only daily screenings, but just making sure that there's adequate supplies in all of the places. Uh, you know, you don't wanna bring everybody in and then have to send them back out. Uh, and that's been how it's been with the casinos as well. Um, I really can't speak for the casinos as far as their procedurals, but uh, the, just in strategy uh, and in the spirit of, of what they're trying to do right now, uh, just making sure that everything is ready to go when we do bring back. Uh, so we're getting closer and closer, I think, to that. And as far as uh, letting our folks know out there, uh, we know we realize a couple of things. Uh, the principal chief knows that there are people out there that are still anxious about coming back. They're still uh, feel uh, just not so comfortable. And we realize that. But we also realize that there's employees out there that are very much wanting to get back to work. They're, 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 they're um, it's something that they, you know, they really need in their lives. They need to get back to work. They need to get back in that daily, that daily grind. And we, we know some people are different. Some people, you know, they crave that, uh, have, having that uh, a place to go for work every, every day. And they've missed that part of this. And then you have people that are, are legitimately uh, have concerns. We recognize that. So we're just trying to meet, um, you, you know, a need for everybody uh, and, and people have different needs and certainly uh, our employees are no different and the chief is very respectful and, and cognizant of that and, and wanting to respect that. So the administration's got an eye on that. We've got an eye on uh, resuming our gaming operations. Um, again, that's something for the gaming folks uh, to talk about specifics on that as far as dates and procedures. Uh, but uh, we're excited about, you know, just looking at different things with our Department of Health, making sure that we're looking at, as I've said before, again, infection rates, not just the numbers, not just saying, oh, we've got a bunch of new cases, but looking at infection rates and where these cases are and um, how, how much um, different uh, portions of the geography are, are affected in our boundaries and what can we do there. So uh, lots of stuff on the, on the plate. Uh, had a conversation uh, Monday morning with Tyler Fish. He's uh, the director of the White House um, uh, Indian Affairs. And so 
uh, had a great conversation with him. Uh, I think a few stories out there indicated he was a Muskogee Creek citizen. He has Muskogee Creek lineage. Uh, he is not a Muskogee Creek citizen. He is, uh, his father is Muskogee Creek, but uh, Cherokee citizen, uh, but great to talk with Tyler and uh, uh, pick his brain on some things and, uh, and you know, establish a relationship uh, between Chief Hill, Second Chief Beaver, and him and his office. And so uh, we're very excited about that. Had another great cabinet meeting. A lot of things discussed in that cabinet meeting. And also uh, had a great committee meeting uh, to uh, get everybody on the same page in the distribution of CARES relief funding. Uh, that's uh, a, a really a concerted effort between uh, grant professionals, uh, Washington DC insiders that have worked with the Treasury Department specifically to know uh, what kind of red tape you have to jump through on those type of things. Uh, you know, commerce professionals, uh, national council members, so that we have citizen input on this committee. We, we want to hear from citizens. We want you and we encourage you to contact your council members on how you'd like to see this distribution done with the CARES relief funding. And that's why we have council representation on the committee. Uh, that's why the principal chief uh, invites and has council members on every call, you know, just about every meeting he does, uh, they're in there. And that's because that's the, uh, that's the, um, you know, that's the relay to the citizens is the council representation. And he understands that. And so do we. So yeah, that's just kind of a rundown. We've been seeing some, um, I don't know if it's official breakdowns of the relief funding, but I have seen some circulation on social media about the specific dollar amounts des designated out for tribes. Has there been any, any official um, documentation on that for the Muskogee Creek Nation? Do we have a ballpark number on what is coming to the nation? And, and then can you kind of elaborate a little more on that committee and how they make those decisions on where to designate those fundings to you? Right, great question. And, and that's something that the committee, I'm gonna leave up to the committee to release actual information on that. Um, we do have a release uh, tomorrow, uh, sometime around the middle of the day tomorrow, I'll be looking for that. Uh, gonna have a video uh, with the, uh, the, the uh, Secretary of the Nation and Commerce, Ms. Tara Branson, who's heading up this committee on the CARES distribution. Uh, she will um, sort of break down the process, uh, the team that we've put together, uh, what they're considering, what they're looking at, We've already seen sort of uh, a few tribes out there kind of come out and say, oh, we're going to do a, a per cap distribution. We're just going to cut everybody a check. And we've kind of seen them start to backtrack and really even kind of, oh, well, we should maybe said that because, you know, people don't understand is, is if you don't give out per cap, uh, if you're not a per cap tribe, uh, this doesn't change that. You know, getting the CARES Act funding, this doesn't change that in any way. We can't just, you know, write a check, things like that, and, and just throw it out there. Uh, but there are things we can do and there are ways to, uh, you know, do this. And that's why we have the committee of these people that know exactly what to do with these kind of, of fun, th these kind of funds that come from the treasury department. They work with it before um, where they get, they have standards and identifications that they have to uh, not only find, but address. And, and, and it's just sort of kind of getting, getting the, uh, getting the funds and then getting the restrictions on the funds or the, you know, um, instructions for the distribution and, and kind of going from there. Um, I will say one of the things that, that, that has been relayed is that uh, this has to be uh, spent uh, COVID related. Uh, it can't just be, you know, we, we, oh, we've got a pet project we've been needing to take care of for a while, but you know, anything like that. So those are part of the challenges I think that this committee are faced with are, are kind of, uh, identifying some things and then seeing, you know, hey, can we make this, uh, can we make sure that this is COVID related? And also, uh, are we following all the guidelines that, that come with this? Because, you know, we don't want anything we do now to result in, you know, an audit or, or a problem eight, nine months down the road. Uh, we really got to cross every T and dot every I on this, uh, on this uh, distribution. And uh, I think we're doing that as far as getting a really good team put together. There's lots of people on this and, um, from different fields and, and in specialized fields with things just as uh, specifically as this uh, distribution. Yeah, I think as I understood it, like, I mean, I could be wrong, correct me if I am. Um, I think that maybe set, like some one of the tribal nations was thinking about putting some of this money towards uh, water infrastructure and things like that, which can be, you know, definitely tied to COVID relation and, and right. things like that because, you know, clean water, washing your hands and, and having those, diff those basic necessities. Um, can uh, you kind of uh, share with us a little 
bit. I've seen a post recently about some of the board openings for Muskogee Creek Nation that uh, Chief Hill is um, yeah. looking to fill right now. Can you kind yes. of go over those for us? Yeah, well, the principal chief, you know, uh, in Muskogee Creek Nation code uh, is assigned to uh, place designees on different boards. You saw uh, several boards out there uh, needing appointees from the principal chief that have positions open right now. And, and this is a, a principal chief. This is an administration uh, that, that is taking sort of an all hands on deck. You know, we want to give everybody a shot and, and open everything up to the most qualified and, uh, individual. And, and let the best man or woman uh, win and, and sort of kind of put it out there and, and look over all this. And that's why, you know, like I said, the, uh, the search for uh, and the placement of a cabinet has been so, uh, it's just this vast, <laughs> you know, landscape of, of resumes and folks coming in for interviews and things like that. Um, one of the things that we really, uh, in, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to say about these board positions is it's open up to not only our in boundary citizens, but, but our, uh, are at large citizens too. If there's one thing that the COVID crisis has showed us is that you can, you can have a meeting with somebody in Los Angeles uh, just as easy as you can have it with them in Altmulgee now. Uh, if we just get I, I did through, see those comments as he was announcing yeah. those different designees. Um, I'm just kind of looking at his post right now. Just a quick yeah. uh, uh, moment here to kind of let people know what what they're they're looking to fill. There's one vacancy on the Muskogee Nation Business Enterprise Board one vacancy on Muskogee Nation Business LLC, um, another vacancy on Mus uh, Muskogee International LLC, a Gaming Operation Authority Board vacancy, Election Board has one vacancy, um, Citizenship Board has one vacancy, uh, College of the Muskogee Nation uh, Board of Regents has a vacancy, the Muskogee uh, Creek Nation Office of Public Gaming, Gaming Commissioners has a vacancy, and then there's a cemetery advisory committee that has two vacancies. So um, the chief has put that out on, on social media and he talks about all the qualifications of those different boards, what they're looking for when they're seeking to fill them. And um, there's information on where you can uh, apply if, you, if you're interested. Um, and then as Jason said, uh, someone even asked the question, you know, are those boards open for uh, at-large citizens? And, and chief did confirm that they are. Um, technology does bridge a lot of gaps nowadays. So. It sure does. And, and we, you know, we, we, like we said, we, we, we really, um, you know, we don't discriminate on our, our citizens that are at large. Uh, they're Muskogee Creek, uh, just like uh, our citizens are in boundaries. They just happen to live in, in other areas. Yes, uh, you know, there are some qualifications uh, where you do have to live in the boundaries. And we understand that. That's policy. That's, that, those are things that were in place long before Principal Chief David Hill came in office. But but also, uh, you know, in instances like this where we can have input from our qualified at-large citizens on, on boards such as this, and, and really a lot of positions, as you can see in the descriptions, uh, that, that call for uh, some, some pretty uh, high credentials, you know, some pretty, uh, you know, um, there's some lofty expectations for these board positions. And, and really, um, that's, you know, the chief, uh, uh, and that's what he has in mind, is being able to say, like I said, uh, may the best candidate win. Uh, we know that we have a lot of bright Muskogee Creek citizens out there that are credentialed, that have wonderful uh, educational experience as well as life experience. And uh, as we said, uh, everything is, is one vacancy except for the cemetery advisory committee. And, and uh, he's looking to fill those and he's gotten great response so far. I think we did a little coverage on that cemetery advisory committee a little, um, a little ways back. Uh, and I did want to kind of take an opportunity to kind of explain to folks too, we were trying to bring you this press briefing live and allow all those questions that people are getting so good, so used to being able to ask. We're having a little technical difficulties with our internet speed at the time um, and couldn't quite get our meeting live, but we're recording it now and then putting it out for folks to see. Um, uh, I'm going to kind of tap in Gary here and see if he has any questions coming up. Yeah, uh, let me back up to the top of our discussion here. Uh, yes, we sure. heard this, uh, the, uh, the date June 1st for a, a return of uh, tribal staff uh, back into their offices. Uh, can you elaborate on that now? Will that be uh, the uh, office people, so to speak, at the complex, uh, separate from gaming? And um, 
will it be the entire staff or will it be gradually worked worked back into the work plan all right thank you gary appreciate it as always uh, you got great questions uh first off uh, uh to, to kind of segment this in the answers the way you segmented the question uh anything decided by gaming and the complex are, are going to be different um whatever they do we're not really beholden to that and whatever we do they they aren't either vice versa so uh, that will be a different uh, thing. I don't know if you'll see us in a little faster than you will the casinos or vice versa. Um, but I know that um, to answer your other question, uh, is it going to be certain employees at a time? Yes. As we phase out, we will phase back in. Uh, you know, of course, our at risk uh, and uh, 65 and older in our chronic medical conditions, uh, they were kind of the first out. They'll be the last back in. Uh, we've actually... Um, made some concessions for those that are at risk that still realize they're at risk and but still want to come back to work you know we've got some folks out there that go that go yeah i fall in the category but uh you know that that generation uh, you, you got you got to love them they're they want to come back to work you know what i mean they're they don't see themselves at risk they see themselves as as just as spry and ready to ready to come in monday through friday as the rest of us so we got to respect that as well and uh and make concessions for them uh, that not only protects us, but protects them as well. And, and make sure that, that, that everything's done right with HR and, and everything like that. So uh, yeah, it's a phase in approach, Gary, we're going to have, you know, first probably our, uh, our essential departments as we did when we phased out, if you'll remember, uh, we went essential staff first then essential departments and then, uh, uh, and then we went that, went that route. So coming back in, probably essential departments first uh, in sort of a reverse and then uh, uh, essential staff uh, doing it that way and, and individual members and everything like that. Uh, again, uh, got to make sure that our prioritized departments and programs are not going to skip a beat. And when I say that, I mean our food distribution, our elderly nutrition, uh, our, our, our HR, our finances department, our uh, uh, child care departments, everything like that. So got to make sure that all of that is, is operational and, and running smooth. And, and that's why it takes a little bit of time and, and takes a lot of uh, heads getting into a room and, and making those decisions and kind of uh, live with them. And, and, and just like everything else with this virus, it's kind of been, uh, you know, play it by ear, uh, kind of seeing, seeing kind of what we're doing, uh, trial and error a little bit. This works maybe. Okay, well, we got a little hindsight now. We can do that a little bit differently. Uh, this next time or when we come back in and that's something we didn't think of uh, make a note of that Let's do it a little bit better next time uh, and, and just like everybody else out there dealing with this. This has been something that uh, uh, You know that we're just feeling our way through it the best we can Now I suppose I fall into that at-risk category being oh, no, no uh, being a senior citizen 30 year olds so, are not at risk uh, Will there be any testing? Uh, uh, ability there as people come back to work if they prefer to be tested uh, will our health department be able to assist them yes uh, that that's one of the things we're talking about daily with the health department is being able to have uh, the uh, supplies and everything needed uh, to do those things and to screen back in and everything like that now uh, as far as testing, I don't have any definitive answers as far as testing, but screening, absolutely. Uh, we're going to have the infrared thermometers where they can just kind of point it at your head, uh, kind of gun to your head a little bit. But uh, So they don't have to worry if your ears were a little dirty? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just take your temperature. They just point it right there at your forehead. Don't have to touch you. Don't have to get near you. Nothing. Uh, just point the uh, point the gun there at your forehead and it reads your temperature and and you'll be logged and, and everything like that and and we'll we'll ask for those that that uh, feel like that if they want to wear a mask uh, you know they're they're probably going to be asked to wear a mask and, and asked to keep social a safe social distancing uh, uh, protocol and kind of stay in your office you know uh, the term um, gathering by the water cooler might be a thing of the past after this thing i know that especially in newsrooms as, as i'll take a term from the, the great gary five here uh newsroom coffee uh you know hey you may have to just you may have to just get your cold uh old cup of coffee and head back to the office and not really uh congregate anymore but that's something that you know we'll learn to adjust with and and it'll be fine as long as i've got the coffee uh, let me uh Toss another question here. Uh, 
about a, a subject you mentioned earlier, and that was a, a conversation with uh, Tyler Fish. Yes, sir. Now, we've seen that he has been removed from the White House staff and placed in charge of the Council on uh, uh, Tribal Consultations, which has not been active since this president has come into office. Now, uh, his predecessor, Obama, made a, uh, quite a deal of it, and, and uh, tribes reacted very well. It has not happened. Now, did Mr. Fish talk about any ideas that he might have about reactivating that council? And is the, the administration going to be uh, uh, upgrading its consultation? Did he share any of that? Uh, Mr. Fish, in this call, Gary, it was, uh, I don't want to say that it was completely introductory and just making the uh, introductions between himself and Chief Hill and, and Second Chief Beaver because this is the first time that the three had ever talked before. Uh, so they, they did do uh, some just kind of asking about one another and everything like that. Uh, I believe Second Chief Beaver did bring up some of the structural uh, changes that he's went through and everything like that. Uh, Mr. Fish, to his credit, uh, didn't give too much as far as, uh, because he's still sort of new into this new uh, role that he's taken on or, or shifted, I guess you could say. Uh, he does feel, though, that, that he can have uh, a great impact in the role that he's going to be at. And he feels that, uh, you know, it just gets him more of in an interior role, more so than uh, in, in the White House. I know a lot of the times that... Um, you look at White House dealings and everything like that, and White House, you know, gets the catches the eye and gets the buzz and everything like that. But I think that from Mr. Fish's comments that he made to Chief and Principal uh, and Second Chief, uh, he feels he can be just as much or not more uh, of a, a real friend and a champion for Indian Country where he's at now, as opposed to uh, just a slight change that uh, that he went through from where he was just a, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Has um, there been any discussion of our situation now with the governor and the gaming compact uh, issue? Now, I, we've uh, heard that uh, that sort of relationship between the tribes and the governor has been deteriorating. Uh, we've seen evidence that uh, even his own staff has not been uh, real supportive of some of these stint decisions. Has there been any recent discussion? Are we still in a waiting mode for some kind of decision to be made? And do you, do you have any idea when that might be actually happening? Yeah, Gary, I, 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 I love the question. I wish I could answer it with, with something better than just we're still in that mode of, of waiting. We, haven't, we really haven't entertained anything new since the last time we talked with the governor on the gaming compacts. Uh, in fact, it's been a really slow news cycle. We had kind of a, a few weeks there where pow, 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 something new came out every day, whether it was a letter from A.G. Hunter or it was, uh, you know, a letter from Speaker McCall or anything like that. We had all these news happenings going on. And, and I appreciate the questions because we really did have, uh, you know, sort of this rapid fire. This was on the news. This was on the people's lips every single day. Uh, but I got to tell you, in the last week and a half, it's really quieted down. And we haven't really heard anything. I think the majority of what we heard uh, was the Oto and the Comanche leadership speak up and sort of defend uh, their uh, decisions to sign these compacts that they did. Uh, and, and listen, we've said from the get go, uh, you know, it's not up to us to tell another tribe uh, what decisions to make that's best for them and their people. Uh, we got to do that here. We know how tough that is. Uh, as a, a, the administration here for the Muscogee Creek Nation, we, we've got our plates full uh, making decisions that are best for, for creeks and, and, and all 89,000 and change of the creeks. And, and so we, we know how tough that is. So we, we're certainly not going to, uh, you know, tell anybody how to run their nation or anything like that. They know what's best for them. However, we still maintain that, that we're united for Oklahoma and our solidarity with the other tribes that we want something uh, that we feel is better for Muscogee Creek Nation. And, uh, you know, that's remains our stance and it will remain our stance until we can get something worked out that's uh, best for everyone, uh, including Oklahoma. I mean, we're still building roads. We're still helping schools. We'll, we're still uh, doing all the things that we've done for Oklahoma in the past. Uh, this hasn't changed that one bit. 
while we may disagree with uh, a sitting governor or, or governors that come and go, just like chiefs come and go, there's, there may be disagreements at times. Uh, but we're still Oklahomans and we're still Muscogee Creek citizens and uh, we're in it for everyone. And uh, I think that we'll, we'll come to a great conclusion as far as what's best for Creek Nation and, and also what's good for the surrounding areas in this state as well. So I know I that's a little of bit of a long answer and kind of getting around what, 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 you, uh, what you asked, but I, I wish that I could say that there had been any news, news happenings this week, but there really hasn't. I think it's been a little bit radio silent, probably because the governor's dealing with some of these vetoes and things that we're seeing play out in the Oklahoma legislature. He's got his hands full there. He's, he's got his hands full with other things right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, if, if that's, that's all that uh, you have, Gary. Oh, I did want to ask one more thing, uh, Jason, of you before you run off. Do you know when the next Gaming Authority Board set to meet and kind of analyze the situation? I think they, they meet pretty regularly to kind of keep abreast of all the issues and, and kind of uh, see where they're at. Um, are we looking at this week or next week? Maybe that they're probably going to be meeting again. They'll be meeting this week. Uh, it's either going to be tonight or tomorrow. Uh, okay. And uh, if you uh, if you'll uh, let me, I'll email you after the the press conference because I don't have it right okay. for me. I can sure. give you a more definitive answer on that. But it will be this okay. week. Yeah. Awesome. They're, I like to kind of stay in touch. They've with gone to meeting weekly now. Yeah, I like to know when I can pester them for more information. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? Go, give, the, give those guys the rattle every now and again. Yes. And, uh, yeah. They've been very good to us um, and, and getting us really quick information about when they do make a decision, and they have been making um, decisions frequently. They, they do include us pretty quickly, so I, I try to accommodate that no, as, as much as possible. No, because I, I, uh, I funnel them quite a bit of, uh, you, you know, requests and everything like yeah. that, because, again, uh, you know, gaming operations, uh, we want them to be able to speak on, on what they're doing and, and the things yeah. that they're taking care of. So, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap us up for today. I want to thank you, Jason, for always taking the time each week to kind of bring us some more of the news from the executive branch. And thank you, Gary, for joining us and all the good questions. And we're sure. going to sign off for today and we'll see you guys next week. Uh, Angel, if I may, just for yes, one moment sure. before I go, just to give everybody an update. Uh, we still are waiting on the forensics uh, uh, investigation to come back on our uh, data security incident here sure. with our Muscogee Creek Nation network. And uh, just so I'm you know, fully transparent and everything like that, had another uh, uh, meeting to update the council, uh, everybody together uh, on the situation and, and still waiting on the uh, forensics investigation. So um, w when we have that, uh, you'll have that immediately. Uh, that's my awesome. uh, promise to Muskogee Media. So awesome, wonderful. And how did how was the turnout for that meeting? Did everybody should kind of kind of come out in force to kind of get the info? I think we had uh, uh, thirteen present and three three council absent. So okay, a majority, right, not, not, majority, a majority. Good, good, wonderful. Yep. All right. Thank you guys, and uh, we'll tune in next week and get some more info. Thank you. Thank you so much.